Have you all? Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, everyone should have a color wheel, um, and I'm just going to touch on the base, the basics of each of these things. I, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but um, first of all, the color wheel is based on the red, yellow, blue. You know, the three primary colors. There are 12 colors in the color wheel. You have the primary colors, and then the secondary colors are the colors that are mixed from the primary colors. So, red and yellow make orange. And yellow and blue make green, and blue and red make purple. So purple, green, and orange are the secondary colors. And then the tertiary colors are the colors that are mixed from those. And I just want to talk a little bit about how light works. Um, light is radiant energy. Light is white. There's no color in light. Light, color comes from our eyes and our brains. It's, it's all happens somehow in there. And there are certain other things about light. Light always travels in a straight line, like this. You know, straight line, unless it hits something, unless it hits matter. So when you, and let's see, if light hits an apple, all of the colors are being absorbed except for the red, and the red is coming, the red wave is coming to your eye and your eye sees red. Um, so the eye, now when you, the brain wants logic, it wants balance, it wants order, and it wants to restore everything back to neutral, to gray. Um, so like for example, if, have you ever heard of those um, scientific studies where if you stare at a red square for three minutes and then you look at a white sheet your eye will see a green square. Yeah. Now, red and green are complements, opposites. And what it is, is it's your brain trying to bring everything back to neutral. The red and the green, if you mix complements, red with green, purple with yellow, and blue with orange, you'll get gray. Um, also, if you think of light as red, yellow, blue, red, the complement of red is green, which is really yellow and blue. So it completes the circle. And that's why complements are so important. Because in a painting, um, your eye wants logic, your eye wants balance, your eye wants harmony. And if you don't, and the contrasts are ways of doing that, of adding logic and balance to your paintings. If you don't, you'll have two things will happen. Either it'll be boring and people will tune out because um, it's just not interesting enough, or the other end will be it'll be too chaotic. The brain won't be able to see any logic or harmony in it, and the person will tune out because they, they can't look at it. They just don't get it. You know? So that's why it helps to have one of these contrasts or a few of them so that even if people don't know what you've done, you've, you've put some logic into it and you've created balance. I mean, um, you know, red and green balance each other out. So the color wheel, first of all, it's a great reference just for knowing what's the complement. Like if I have this turquoise and I'm thinking, okay, what's the complement of turquoise? Um, you know, this will tell me right away. It's sort of a red-orange. So it's just a great thing to, to have. Um, and complements are just great ways, like if you're working with a red and you want to tone it down a little bit, there are three ways to tone down a color. You can add a bit of the complement. It also always darkens it a little bit. Um, or you can add black or gray. But the compl it's a, just a great tool to have for just fine-tuning your colors. Um, the color wheel is also really good for um, creating color schemes. And again, that's all based on creating harmony and logic and balance. Um, the, the most basic scheme is monochromatic, all one color. You know, you can make it lighter, darker, duller, brighter. You can play with that. You can modulate it. You can have little bits of light and lots of bits of dark. You know, you can play with one color. That's monochromatic. Then there, okay, analogous. Okay, analogous. Like if you look at that painting up there, that beautiful blue and purple painting, those are analogous colors. They're all very close to each other on the color wheel. And they say generally you should like three or four colors from the color wheel. So any three colors that are 
together on the color wheel will create an analogous color scheme. And again, you can play with that. You can make them lighter and darker and mix with, play with proportions. Yeah, is that they're all very closely related to each other. So it gives you a harmony and it gives you a sense of atmosphere. Um, you know, they're, they're soothing. People love analogous colors. You know, all the beautiful landscapes that you see are generally analogous colors. You know, they're all very closely related and it's like seeing a, a landscape at sunset. Everything is bathed in gold, golden, you know, and it gives you that feeling. So that's a really nice color scheme. Um, another, another color scheme is the complementaries, you know, like this. And it doesn't mean that you can, you, I always struggle with this, it doesn't mean that you can only use those two colors or those analogous colors. You can add accents, you can do whatever you want, but that should just be, that's, that's the intentionality. You know, you say, okay, I'm going to start and I'm going to create an analogous painting using pinks and warm colors. You know, you're being intentional. Then when you're inspired, you can throw in some green, you know. Um, then there's tr they're triadic, because you know, people look at this color wheel and they think, what is all this, all these triangles? But basically they're, they're just, triadic would be um, a triangle, like red, yellow, blue. Or if you turned it a little bit, it would be purple, green, orange. And again, they're colors that if you add them all up, would balance each other out to, to, to neutral gray. And tetradic is a square. And that's, again, basically will give you two, two, comp, two sets of complements. So, you know, again, if you're, if you're not quite sure if you're about to start a painting, it's a good idea to, to think about, you know, what kind of an effect do you want? And um, what colors do you want to use? What, how do you want it to feel? Do you want it to feel lively? Do you want it to be, you know, it's poetry. Do you want it to be soothing or romantic or, or sparky? So the, the color wheel is a very, very handy thing to have and to refer to. I like my colors to be as brilliant as possible. And with oil, anyway, and acrylic, I think if, you, if I tint it gray, it's just never gonna be quite as bright. Um, with this, I painted big sections in black and gray, but the area where I wanted the colors to be really bright, I left it white. Um, but yeah, I know some people tone their paintings with orange and then they basically paint it blue. And I think that's because a little bit of the orange peeks through and that's the complement to blue and it kind of, it's a nice, it's a beautiful effect. So I think you just have to, you have to try different things. I, you know, it's, um, you can do, and they all work. I think um, a neutral gray is a, I mean, I use a neutral gray mixing paper palette. For, before I start talking about the color mixing guide, I'm just going to talk about, this is called split, split primary color mixing. Um, and it's just, if you want really clean, clear, bright colors, this is just a really good thing to remember. There, if, you, if, you, if you're setting up your palette, you use a warm yellow, like cadmium yellow, and a cool yellow, like lemon yellow. A cool blue, like phthalo blue, and a warm blue, ultramarine blue. A cool red, like um, rose or alizarin crimson, and a warm red, cadmium red light. And so whenever you're mixing colors, mix the colors that are closest to each other on the color wheel. Sure, I used all kinds of greens for this, and I mixed red into green to darken it and dull it. And, um, you know, there's one of these boards, they say, you know, bright colors will shine like a jewel in a sea of gray. So, you know, it's, it's you don't, unless you want everything to be bright, which is pure hue, another way of approaching your painting is to you know, selectively use the bright colors, but surround them with a gray or a dulled down red. And that's what I did here. I tried to vary it, you know, the gray. And the gray also in a painting that's really lively and colorful, gray gives your eye a place to rest, you know, which, which is kind of a nice thing. You know, my paintings tend to be highly chromatic. 
and I'm, I try to put in areas where the eye can rest. And also the grays and the, and the grayed colors, like